Hi, my name is Megan Nolan and I'm the author of Acts of Desperation and my second novel, Ordinary Human Failings, is coming out on the 13th of July. Uh, Ordinary Human Failings it begins with an ambitious tabloid journalist named Tom who gets wind of a tragedy that's happened on a council estate in London. Uh, the year is 1990 and a child has been found dead. Another child is suspected of having something to do with the crime and Tom gets uh, to know a little bit about this family who are a reclusive Irish family who moved to England about 10 years prior. Um, Tom then approaches the family and offers to put them up in a hotel with limitless alcohol, some pocket money, so long as he can keep them as a source on tap just for his newspaper. This then leads to a very uh, high pressure environment where this family who have become very estranged from one another over the years are kept in a hotel together while Tom tries to uncover their secrets, which he believes may have led to the death of this young child. Uh, although it's sort of set around a crime and based around this pivotal incident, mostly I consider it to be a portrait of this family, the Greens, and we go back in time with them into their past in Ireland and try to figure out why they've become so silent and so removed from one another and try to understand how this unhappiness has spread through the generations. Um, and the family really st stuck with me for the last three years and I care a lot about all of them and I really hope everyone else does too. So I'm here at Waterstones Piccadilly and I've chosen three books that are my favourites and have influenced some of my writing. Uh, my first cho choice is Of Human Bondage by Somerset Mom. And uh, this I read when I was about 15 and it was one of my first uh, big kind of birth to death full life novels that really uh, stuck with me in the kind of Dickensian mode. This one is about Philip Carey, who's uh, orphaned when we meet him at the beginning of the book. And we see him move to Germany, to Paris, to become an artist, where he falls in love with a waitress called Mildred. And this, I think, is the real core of it for me. He has this very abject love story with Mildred, where he becomes very pathetic and very, uh, not just obsessed, but kind of completely at her disposal at all, at all times, no matter how much she rejects him. And I found it kind of moving in a way that someone has this total sacrifice, even when it's not very glamorous or well, well re uh, repaid. And yep, yeah, just a wonderful, big, uh, big, long birth to death novel that I love. I'm now here in the crime section and I've chosen for my second book, In the Cut by Suzanne Moore. Uh, in the Cut came out in 1995 and it was a very shocking departure for Suzanne Moore who had at this point written three, I think, novels that were quite family based and a little bit more sedate than this one, which is very sexual and very violent. And she has said, which I find very interesting and inspiring in my own uh, work that she decided to kind of make a departure from being a women's writer and write a noir, which was an intentionally male sort of genre that she wanted to crack into. Uh, it's about a woman called Franny, who's an English teacher who happens across um, a sexual act being um, taking place in the bottom of a nightclub. And then the person she sees there turns out to be a detective who's investigating a really brutal murder in her neighborhood. She then begins a sort of very troubled, dark affair with him as she begins to suspect he might be responsible for this crime. So it's very, uh, very intense, very graphic, but absolutely brilliantly written. And uh, yeah, just a real, a real shocking, but, but uh, incredible book that I love. And for my final pick, I've chosen A Man in Love by Carlo Vic Knausgaard. Uh, he's a writer who's been very important to me over the last 10 years or so. And this book is the second of the, of the six that he wrote, and uh, of, sorry, of the six My Struggle books. And uh, this one is, it kind of goes into his marriage initially and his experience of uh, being a new father, but then quite brutally goes into him falling in love with another woman and uh, leaving his wife. And I think that's the part, it's, it's about lots of other things as well, but that's the part that really stuck with me is his sort of abjection and shame when he's falling in love with this new person who initially doesn't really respond to his advances and he's not only feeling the shame about leaving his wife, but also about being sort of rebuffed by this new woman. And there's this really incredible scene where he's at a literary festival with her and then is rejected and is so filled with horror at his rejection that he cuts his face with a piece of glass and has to go down and face her and all the other writers the next morning and it's just this scene of total desolation that really stuck with me over the years. Um, and yeah, just also very funny at times about masculinity. There's some things where he, he's you know a bit ashamed of wheeling his babies around in prams because it's too feminine and there's a wheelie suitcase at one point that he has to carry upright because it's too weak to be wheeling it around town. So yeah, very dark but also very funny and yeah, one of my favourite writers ever.